the 90s were so great. You know, every, we had all these shows and it was rolling and you could see us everywhere. And I looked at her and I said, because having really experienced it, my thing was, it's not as great as you think. The reason why is because nobody of color owned those shows. How black is the show if you're not in ownership of it? You know, if you're not controlling the platform, is it really a black show? You know, don't get fooled. Don't get bamboozled. So I, I don't even like the versus television thing where artists are getting together and they're Erica Badu battling Jill Scott and, uh, you know, this person. Why are we the only pe people who are dissing and battling each other? It, it doesn't even make sense to me. You don't own anything. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice and you watching Choice TV. So I had to get on here and go in about some shit. So long story short, if you guys haven't heard, the writer's strike is currently going on in America and the entertainment industry has pretty much been in shambles because as we all know, a lot of Hollywood is not trying to pay writers, actors, and people who are on set as much as they did before. Things have changed. Streaming is a reason why a lot of people aren't making much money anymore and a lot of actors are currently living off of two dollars ten dollars five dollar residuals and it's just been crazy lately so of course a lot of actors and people in the writers guild aka the people who write tv shows have been on strike and they're not getting on strike until all the major corporations and major billionaires pay up what they feel they're owed and unfortunately this has caused all of our favorite shows like euphoria to be on hold and shows like euphoria Abbott Elementary and many other shows and many other Marvel movies will no longer have a lot of writers and their best staff members on board because a lot of them feel like they deserve more money, which they technically do. So unfortunately, we're going to be in a phase where a lot of these actors and writers and entertainers will be replaced by AI very, very soon. Soon, all your favorite extras and actors and entertainers and writers will all be replaced by an AI robot who could write a TV show just as fast and for literally no pay. So the entertainment industry is fucked. And now motherfuckers are now going to have to find another hustle because the career of being an entertainer, actor, and writer will not be sustainable until people learn the importance of owning the shit that they work on. And of course, I did want to discuss Trina McGee, the famous actress from the 90s show Boy Meets World, who had a lot to say about the black community and why a lot of us shouldn't even complain about us being pushed out of Hollywood or us not get, having the resources of what we want, but yet not owning anything. But we'll discuss her a little bit later in this video. So recently, the famous actress from the 90s and early 2000s, Giovanni Samuels, recently came forth and said that she's one of those actors that is struggling and on strike because she's struggling to support herself and sustain herself. I need y'all to understand that not all child stars are rich. Not all of us are balling. The leads of the cast, they get the big money checks. The supporting cast, like myself, we don't get that. That's why we're striking, okay? I'm asking for a livable wage. I'm asking for health insurance. You have no idea how hard it is. We just came out of COVID and now we're going into a strike. I used my 401k, my nest egg, my savings to survive COVID. I don't know what money y'all think I have. Or I, I, I'm, I'm saving up something. No, 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 no. Okay. Between family members stealing from me or doing a show where they didn't pay me or now I'm fighting for residuals because executives don't want to give me a dime. I am asking for a livable wage. I'm asking for health insurance. I got responsibilities and things that I got to take care of. We got back to school coming. I got to put my son in private school. Private? Oh, you ain't got to do that. You put him in public school. I can't put him in public school. Because when I did, they was picking on him because of me. The parents were jealous because I was on TV and famous and they told them their kids to pick on my kid. So I had to take him out and put him in a decent school. I'm tired. 
I don't own a home. I barely own my car. So I don't know what money I think I have, but I don't. And I have a job. I've got two. Now, Giovanni Samuels is very popular for many, many things. Most people who grew up in the 90s remember her from the hit sketch comedy show, All That. A lot of us loved her when she played Nia from Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. And most of us, of course, most notably know her from that cringeworthy Bring It On movie that starred Solange Knowles. And she was a great figure in that movie. To this day, she's still very known in that movie for her little Shabuya cheer, which is a huge fucking TikTok meme. So overall, she's definitely earned her stripes and she's definitely earned her way in Hollywood. However, the money doesn't really match up with her impact and her legacy. She went on TikTok and she took to her Instagram to blast the entertainment industry for not paying her that much and how she's currently struggling to take care of herself, take care of her kid, and how she's really going through it. Now, of course, many people show to her grace and sympathy because it does suck that you do something for so long and you put so much energy in this shit and you don't make any money out of it. Because again, this is all she's ever known. She's literally been doing this shit in the entertainment industry since she was 15 years old and she really hit her huge peak when she was like 19 20 so to see that she can't even live off of it no more to see that she can't really live luxury and live the high life and the fun life like a lot of her peers that managed to surpass her it's unfortunate but it's just a hard reality of hollywood and i've talked about this in other videos and i'll talk about it again a lot of actors and entertainers don't make that much money there's a reason why a lot of our parents and relatives tell us you want to be an artist you want to do anything involving arts and crafts you're gonna be broke, you're gonna be struggling because it's not easy to sustain a career as an entertainer. That shit is hard. So unless you're willing to you know, sell your soul to the devil or work really, really hard, it's gonna be difficult to sustain yourself. And the truth of the matter is, if you're not flipping burgers and shaking some ass on the side or making OnlyFans, being an entertainer is not as lucrative as it used to be because the market is so saturated. Everybody and their fucking mom want to be famous. Everybody and their fucking mom want to be an entrepreneur, influencer, the next Jada Waiter, the next Ari Fletcher. Everybody and their fucking mom wants to be the next Alexa Demi. You know, not many people want to be doctors or lawyers anymore. And that's fine. Giovanni Samuels, of course, got a lot of sympathy and she got a lot of grace. But of course, a lot of people looked at her and said, bitch, go get a job. Go get a real job. What the fuck are you doing? You know, same here. And it's true. I see where a lot of people are coming from because just to play devil's advocate, a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people can't sustain themselves. A lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people are here, out here eating ramen noodles and struggling. And some of y'all may be wondering, why is that relevant? Well, the reason why a lot of people were dragging her, because let's be honest for a second. Let's not forget that two years ago when we were still fresh into the damn pandemic and things weren't going back to normal anytime soon, minimum wage workers were striking their asses off. People who work drive through people who work at McDonald's, people who work at freaking Amazon, like nurses even, people who don't even make them enough in, you know, essential jobs, like TSA people, people who work at airports, janitors. They was all, like, complaining because the minimum wage wasn't enough to sustain themselves in a lot of states. Waiting for their meal. Fighting for 15 and a living wage. Greeted by McDonald's workers in Durham, joining a nationwide day-long strike. The fact that people are standing here fighting for $15 an hour to send a clear message, not just to corporations, to people in general. While McDonald's says it's raising its entry-level minimum wage to $11 an hour, it only counts for corporate-owned restaurants, not franchises. They did $5 billion last year during a pandemic, and all that money went to their shareholders and not one cent went to raising wages for us. Bank of America, Amazon, Chipotle, Under Armour, all announcing minimum wage increases without any federal or state legislation forcing them to do so. In wages up over time, small and medium-sized businesses suffer the most, many of which barely managed to survive the pandemic and recession. So a lot of people look at these actors and they're just like, I mean, hell, now, welcome to the club. Look look what we got to go through. Because guess what? When these writers went on strike, major corporations and major news outlets were trying to interview these actors, give them platforms, all that stuff. But I didn't see not one of these motherfucking actors make a post or spread awareness about the fact that we should be paying a lot of these damn regular, everyday fucking people more money. I didn't see barely any of these actors or entertainers or celebrities talk about how the minimum wage should be raised and how more money should be made and how 
all this stuff should be broken even. And I didn't see many of them. I mean, there was like a few. I know Leslie Jones spoke on this, but not many. And let's be real for a second. A lot of these celebrities and entertainers who are hoping that we stand by them, who are hoping that we give them sympathy, these are the same people who fell some top away when a lot of us did not want to get the jab, aka the Colby jab, right? Where you had to get the jab in order to go back to work. You had to get the jab in order to go back to everyday life. These same celebrities were being puppets for Hollywood telling us who to vote for, how we should vote, what agendas to believe, and how we should vote for this person because of that, and how we need to stand up and agree with the jab, or else, you know, they should be left behind. And speaking of left behind, I remember when Don Lemon literally got on national television when he worked for CNN, and he literally said that anyone that doesn't want to get the jab should be left behind. I think we have to stop coddling people when it comes to this and the vaccine saying, oh, you can't shame them. You can't call them stupid. You can't call them silly. Yes, they are. The people who aided and abetted Trump are stupid because they believed his big lie. The people who are not getting vaccines, who are believing the lies on the Internet instead of science, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind because they are keeping the majority of Americans behind. Fast forward to now, Mr. Don Lemon literally got fired from CNN recently. So the entertainment industry in Hollywood is not playing. If you don't do what the fuck they say or they get irritated with you and annoyed with you, you know, things are getting expensive. Inflation is real. People are quick to, to literally cut you off and fire you if you're not making them as much money anymore. And it's funny because Don Lemon had all that shit to say about people not wanting to get the jab two years ago. But now, now... He's fired from CNN, and the Hollywood industry don't give a damn about him anymore. How interesting. How interesting. How he said he was let go b before he even knew it. And now a lot of people are supposed to feel bad and have empathy for a lot of people who are just rich and famous and celebrities. Now, again, I wish everyone well who is trying to take care of their family and do well for themselves. But, they get, again, that's why the average person, the average regular person at home just has a hard time trying to share sympathy with essential workers nine to five workers who work at fast food jobs and barely make enough money as it is at a fast food job or working at a restaurant you know compared to a hollywood actor that was on tv and hanging out with solange and hanging out with beyonce and britney spears's little sister and hanging out with all these people who saw more money than anyone will ever see in their lifetime so let's not even talk about that. The fact that a lot of entertainers are getting fired, a lot of entertainers are looking out for them. You know, Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, allegedly gave a seven-figure donation to a lot of people who are in the Sav Actra Actors Union. Dwayne The Rock Johnson wasn't at this morning's rally, but he did make a seven-figure donation to the sag After Foundation to help union members who are struggling. It's a historic donation, but a lot of people are wondering why Hollywood's biggest stars haven't been hitting the picket line. To help support them in the midst of the strike, to make sure they're all taken care of and they're all good. But I didn't see that many celebrities donating seven figures to all these people who work at Taco Bell, McDonald's, who work as TSA agents and security guards. But the average person who has to pay rent and take care of like three, four kids, the single mothers in the world who got to work these, you know, these jobs who don't pay that much, you know, they're in the worst predicament ever. A lot of people are struggling. Everyone's going through it. You know what people have to do? People have to go get a job. People at their corporate job weren't getting paid that much, so guess what? They got laid off. They got laid off, and now they have to go working at a retail store, or now they have to pick up side gigs on the side. Now they have to go do some little virtual work or do some you know, customer service work on the side because they're trying to take care of themselves and their kids. Now, on top of Giovanni Samuels going through her shit, I really do hope that she figures herself out and her life does come back together. But I also want to talk about the importance of ownership and self-accountability. Now, let's be honest for a second. A lot of actors will sit up here and say, I'm struggling. Oh, my God, these Hollywood entertainers, these rich billionaires, you know, they all got us fucked up. You know, Leslie Jones will go in on the elites. All these people are going in on these rich billionaires saying they fucking suck and how they should get a piece of that pie, too. You want to know something? Ownership is insanely important. And the more people realize this, the less conversations we're going to have to have about not getting opportunities. A wise man once told me, stop looking for opportunities and create your own. A lot of these actors got millions of followers, hundreds of thousands of followers. You know what they could do? They can create their own production companies. They could pitch their own projects. And of course, I don't want to hear the whole, oh, well, that's not that easy. Well, someone had to do it before it became possible, right? So it's possible, isn't it? 
Create your own studios, create your own publishing companies, create your own companies where you can film your own projects. For example, Yara Shahidi, she has her own production company with her mother. And guess what? She now has the leverage to use her platform, her influence, and her money to now get into these rooms where she can now pitch TV shows, pitch movies, and pitch projects to other major corporations who may want to collaborate with her, fund her project, and now she's able to bring things to life and get probably 80% of the profit because she has her own table. Same thing goes for someone like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt has his own production company. He produces a good chunk of his films. He uses his own money, his own funding, his own platform. And that's where all the real money is, ownership. The reason I'm bringing this up is because the famous 90s actress, Trina McGee, the beautiful Trina McGee, recently did an interview where she basically decided to go in on the fact that a lot of actors and entertainers don't own shit, hence why we don't see a lot of black TV shows anymore. So Trina McGee, as we all know, was a famous actress in the 90s and late 80s. She was known for being on The Cosby Show. She also was on The Parenthood. She was on so many TV shows back in the day. She was on her shit. And most of us mostly know her from Boy Meets World where she played Angela. She was a very important character because there weren't that many interracial couples on predominantly white TV shows, especially hit successful TV shows that are as prestigious as that TV show, Boy Meets World. So Angela went out of her way to do an interview and she addressed how a lot of us can sit up here and complain about not having our own tables or Hollywood not giving us the pass or Hollywood not giving us access pass to their table or a piece of their pie, but not many of us would go out of our way to create our own table. The 90s were so great, you know, we had all these shows and it was rolling and you could see us everywhere. And I looked at her and I said, because having really experienced it, my thing was, it's not as great as you think. The reason why is because nobody of color owned those shows. How black is the show if you're not in ownership of it? You know, if you're not controlling the platform, is it really a black show? You know, don't get fooled. Don't get bamboozled. So my thing is, um, I want to, I'd rather to a certain extent gather up my resources to produce and direct things that are, are uh, small stories, real stories, stories without robots and AI and an agenda of what <laughs> they have in store for us. Things that people can identify with to love themselves more. There's a, true, there's a true lack of that right now. And um, it takes ownership and it takes a uh, building of your resource to actually accomplish that, that a person. I, I don't even like the versus television thing where artists are getting together and they're Erica Badu battling Jill Scott. And uh, you know, this person, why are we the only pe people who are dissing and battling each other? It, it doesn't even make sense to me. I don't see white people doing this. I don't see them putting, you know, uh, I don't know. They're not battling. You know what I'm saying? We're, there's just too much of this inner tribal combat thing going on with us. And we're not looking at the bigger picture. You don't own anything. I don't even know if Erica Badu or Jill Scott even own their publishing. If they do, God bless you. But why am I looking to, to, to put it all in them to battle each other? It's, it's a distraction to what really should be looked at. I'm not concerned about acting. I'm concerned about um, whatever impact I can have to make people understand, especially people of color, that it really is about um, ownership. And she brought this up because the conversation of why a lot of black TV shows like Girlfriends or this or that don't come up no more, why we only have trash ass reality shows like Baddies or this show or that show or Love and Hip Hop, and the truth is this, a lot of these major black shows were owned by billionaire white male corporations who can give two fucks about the culture and just wanted to make a quick pretty penny off of what was trendy. And she said some real shit. How black were these shows where there were no black writers? How black are these shows where they only got their few token black writers but all the major producers and all the people who provided the funding were white billionaires who pulled the plug because they felt like black issues and black culture wasn't profitable anymore. That's the thing. And a lot of people can learn a lot of shit from Trina McGee because Trina McGee has actually stood to her own words. She took her own advice. She actually has her own production company. She's produced her own movies. She has her own films on Amazon Prime. She's created her own way. You know, she's good. She's secured. You know, she knows how to move in the entertainment industry because she's been moving in this entertainment industry since like the late 80s. 
So it's just little things like that that people got to understand. A lot of these writers can sit up here and complain about why there's no TV shows, why there's no representations, but create something, write something, own something. You know, look at the Wayne brothers. The Wayne brothers are filthy fucking rich. You know what I'm saying? Like, they never have to create a hit film ever in their life. You know, they've been struggling to create a hit film, you know, since the late 2010s. You know, you don't really see that much major projects coming from them anymore. But they're still working. And guess what? A lot of stuff they do is under their own production company, the Wayne Brothers. They have their own union. They have their own empire. And they have their own family. And they have their own circle. Look at someone like Shaq. Shaq is, fun fact, one of the most powerful people in the world. Shaq is known for being one of the most well-respected basketball players to ever live in the past 25 years. And look at Shaq. Shaq went from being an NBA basketball player, known for doing some acting, and now... This dude owns stake in all the major companies in the world. He owns stake. He is part owner of Forever 21. He's part owner of JCPenney. He's part owner in Krispy Kreme. He owns multiple franchises of Krispy Kreme donuts out here in Los Angeles, California. I don't like to seem like I'm bragging, but I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> who owns Marilyn Monroe? Who owns who? Marilyn Monroe. Playboy? Who owns Elvis Presley? Who owns Forever 21? Who owns J.C. Penney? Me. <laughs> the Diesel. Yeah, I own my real. Hey, stand up for that, y'all. Stop playing. So my real business, my real business is I own 50 brands. So when I was retiring. I'm looking around, and I'm like, how does Michael Jackson and all these guys live forever? So I called the three companies that help people live forever, and they brought my band for a lot of money. Now I own all those other brands. So if Shaq goes away, shit, we still got Elvis. <laughs> a lot of these actors have access to social media. Some of them can literally create a YouTube show. A lot of people out there who want to be entrepreneurs and create their own bag, a podcast literally takes three to four hours to make. A YouTube channel literally takes like 15 minutes to make. You know, a fun fact, a lot of y'all know that when I made YouTube videos and I still make YouTube videos, I used to complain about a lot of my YouTube content being censored. Like, what the fuck? I never give a fuck about money, whatever. Like, if money is low, I don't give a fuck. Pe people on the fucking internet don't want to hear that shit. What m my issue was, I couldn't be my complete self and talk about the interesting topics I wanted to talk about because I would have to worry about YouTube taking shit down, you know? But what I did was this, instead of complaining, I took a lot of people in the comment section's advice. And you know what I did? I worried about creating my own opportunity. So now I have things such as a podcast that's doing really, really fucking well, where I talk about all types of crazy shit that I probably couldn't talk about on here. I have a separate Patreon. On top of that, I'm also working on other projects that I can't really talk about, but those are just little things of creating your own opportunities. You can't just rely on one thing in the creative space. You know, for people like Giovanni Samuels and all these actors to say, this is heartbreaking that they're taking this away from me, this is wrong. Okay, so what are you gonna do about it? Stop playing victim and take accountability. You wanna be, you wanna be stable and you wanna continue to be an entertainer? Write a book. If you can't write a book and it's not making that, you that much money, start a damn podcast. You know, it's so easy for these people to sit up here and complain and get upset that Hollywood is not giving them opportunity that they feel like they deserve. And the sad part is, the reason why the rich are able to consistently stay rich and build a legacy off of being rich is because a lot of them know how to play the game. They know the importance of creating assets and making sure those assets pay them for the rest of their life. If these actors want to continue working, why don't they work with YouTube channels? Why don't they work with YouTubers? Why don't they work with people who are on Tubi? Why don't they work with stream platforms? Why don't they go to reality television? Why don't they go on other platforms? Why don't they create their own platforms? You know, why don't they come together and create an app? They're so worried about what billionaires think, but unfortunately with the day of inflation and the fact that all of our rents are going up, the fact that taxes are going up, the fact that groceries are going up, the fact that gas is going up, a lot of people are gonna make sure that they get as much as they can and these billionaires and millionaires that own every fucking thing are not going to give you a piece of their corporate pie. It just is what it is. So people like Giovanni Samuels and all these ads and entertainers that are constantly complaining need to take what Trina McGee said into consideration. Why sit up here and complain about not having what you want and not being stable when you don't own anything? You own nothing. You know, if you're not controlling the platform, 
is it really a black show? You know, don't get fooled. Don't get bamboozled. So you own absolutely nothing. And then you're mad because these dirty, slimy, ugly, raggedy motherfuckers that we call corporate giants own you and they own your face and they own your likeness. And if they wanted to, they can technically scan your face and create an AI version of you if you didn't want to go back to work. So these writers and actors are complaining, but y'all signed y'all likeness to these major corporations and now they're able to make millions and billions. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Tell me what you guys thought. Tell me if you guys agree with me, disagree with me, drag me. I don't give a fuck. Just let me know your thoughts. That's that for this video. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. Oh, not really sure how you feel about it. Something about the way you move makes me feel like I can't live without you. And it takes me all the way. I want you to stay. I want you to stay. It's funny you're the broken one, but I'm the one who needed true saving. Hold on, I want you to stay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want you to stay. That's all you get for free.